Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I find you well. Today, once more, we meet in yet another segment of our mathematics for business, where today we'll be focusing on ratios, proportions, and linear equations. What do we mean? Uh, before we get to that, let's look at how we are going to tackle this discussion. We have uh, briefly divided it into three sets of discussions. The first one focusing on ratios and proportions, and the second one focusing on solving linear equations, and finally the third one solving simultaneous linear equations. So that's what we'll be focusing on in this discussion. Well, first things first, we have said discussion one will be focusing on ratios and proportions. In this segment of our discussion we'll be focusing, we'll be trying to find out what is a ratio, how do we use ratios, how do we simplify ratios before we graduate into looking at proportions. We also will be looking at what are proportions, the properties of proportions, and how we can use proportions in our everyday real life. Well, what is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. And we also say ratios can be written in three different ways, as shown on the slide. A to B, that's a ratio. Or we can say A, full colony B. It's a ratio. We can also write ratios as a fraction, A over B. Now, because ratios are fractions, it means the numerator should be any number from one and above. And the denominator cannot be any number can be any number other than zero. So in other words, the denominator should never be zero. Well, let us uh, see how we can uh, work with ratios. I will start by looking at an example there. The ratio of boys and girls in a class is given as 12 to 11. What does that mean? It means for every 12 boys, you can have 11 girls to match them. Well, this does not necessarily mean that we have got a class of 23 people. It can be any number, but whatever number that we come up with, it should satisfy that ratio of 12 boys is to 11 girls. There could be exactly 12 boys and 11 girls. There could be 24 boys. And if there are 24 boys, then automatically it means there should be 22 girls. We could have 120 bo uh, boys, in which case we are expected to have 110 girls in order to satisfy that ratio. Well, let us look at another example. Okay. In this example, we are saying the ratio of length and width of this rectangle is 4 to 1. What does that mean? It means the length could be 4 centimeters, it could be 4 meters, but whichever the case may be, the width should be either 1 centimeter or 1 meter. That is if we are using centimeters, we use centimeters both for the length and for the width, and if we are using meters, we do the same. We use meters both for the length and for the width. Now, here is a small challenge. We are required to find the ratio. Now, let us say we are given a rectangle that has got 8 centimeters, a length of 8 centimeters. What will be our width? The answer is given. It will be 2 centimeters. Don't worry for now. We shall get to that. How did we arrive at that? Well, if you look at the example that I've just given of 8 centimeters long and 2 centimeters wide, you would find that the ratio of 4 to 1 is still satisfied. That's what we mean by ratios. Okay. Let's look at yet another one. 
The ratio of cats and dogs at my home is 2 to 1. What does that tell me? It tells us that for every two cats that I have, I've got one dog. Logic tells us that if we've got six cats, automatically we'll be having three dogs. The question is, how did we get that? We'll get to that. Well, let's look at how we arrive at these figures that we are focusing on. Ratios, the ratios that we saw on the last slide were all simplified. And the question is, how was it done? Let's first look at the ratio of boys to girls. We said the ratio of girls to boys is 12 to 1. Let me put it here on this slide. Uh, let me try to zoom it to see whether, oh, too much, I think. Okay, somewhere there. Now, the same slide that you are seeing is the same slide that I'm working on here. If you look at the ratio here, 12 to 11, it simply means we are just deriving it from the... Uh, problem that we highlighted earlier on, the ratio of boys and girls. We said for every 12 boys, we have got 11 girls. And we can write it as a fraction, 12 over 11. Okay? We are saying again, when you look at this part, the midsection, ratios can be expressed in a fraction form. We've already looked at that, A over B, where we said B should never be zero. So, the ratio of the rectangle, you remember we said we looked at a rectangle that is uh, a length of 4 centimeters and a width of 1 centimeter. We can write it as 4 is to 1, as shown on this slide or paper. The last one, this, we are now looking at the ratio of cats to dogs. We said for every two cats in my home, I have. I have got one dog. So we can write it as 2 over 1 or simply 2 to 1. Well, simple. Now, I want us to look at how we can we simplify ratios. How do we simplify ratios? Well, I have got 12 cats and I have got 6 dogs in that example. Okay? Look on the slide. 12 cats and 6 dogs. You are being required to simplify that ratio. But as you find out, it will translate to 2 to 1, a ratio of 2 to 1. The question is, how did we get to that? Okay. As you can see, 12 over 6, we can simplify this because if we say 6 into 6, it goes once, okay? Then six into 12, it goes twice. So we can end up with the two over one. That's how we ended up with that figure. What we have done here, 12 divided by six, right? We got two. And six divided by six, we get the one. We have simplified it. So when we say we have got 12 cats and six dogs, is the same as saying, for every two cats that we have, we have got one dog. Well, let's look at uh, yet another example. This one is um, a person's arm, okay? Let me put it everything on the slide, then we explain what we mean there. Okay. Right, there we are. Simplification of ratios. Okay? I want us to look um, uh, at a person, a hypothetical person's arm. The person has got an arm of 80 centimeters and he is 2 meters tall. We are required here to find the ratio of the length of this person's arm to the person's total height. Now, to compare, to be able to compare or to come up with a, a ratio, these 
the units of measurement should be the same. You see we have got 80 centimeters here versus 2 meters. We need to change the units of measurement into a common unit of measurement. There are two ways. We can either change it to centimeters or we can change everything to meters. Okay. Now, let's try the centimeter first. So our ratio here is the ratio of the arm to the height. You see, we said we have got 8 centimeters. Here, let me take a highlighter. Our arm's length is 8 centimeters, which is that one. And the height is 2 meters. This one, we put it there, 2 meters. But now, here we've got centimeters, and here we've got meters. We need to change this into the same unit of measurement. And we've said we're going to try to begin by changing everything to centimeters. What does that mean? 8 centimeters will not change. We'll leave our 8 centimeters there. And the 2 meters changed to centimeters. We know in every meter we've got 100 centimeters. So 2 meters is the same as 200 centimeters. Now, we have got this ratio. 8 centimeters to 200 centimeters. We can cancel the centimeters. They cancel each other. We remain with what? 80 to 200. We can cancel a zero, a zero there. Then we end up with 8 over 20, right? This is where we canceled. So we end up with 8 over 20. Now, we can say, find a number that goes into both of these numbers to the numerator and to the denominator. We have got 4. If we say 4 into 8, we get this 2. And 4 into 20, it gives us 5. So, our ratio now is 2 is to 5. That is our ratio. It's the same as 80 centimeters is to 2 meters. Right. So once we have the same units of measurement, it becomes very simple to uh, simplify a problem. Well, having looked at that, I want us to look at the same uh, problem that we just looked at, uh, but this time around, instead of changing the units of measurement to uh, centimeters, we change them to meters. It's the same thing. Let me go to the next slide. Let's try meters now. It's still the same. The ratio of arm divided by height. It's 8 centimeters divided by 2 meters. Okay? Now, if we are to change 8 centimeters, it's a fraction of a meter. Okay? Because in every meter, we've got 100 centimeters. But 8 centimeters, it's 0 0.8 meters. Now, as you can see, we have got meters. 0 0.8 meters over 2 meters. Now, there is a slight challenge that we will face there, but we will discuss how we are going to uh, deal with that one. Okay. If you look, 8 centimeters, 0 0.8 over 2 meters. Uh, it is advisable that we try to avoid working with the decimal numbers. Okay. Therefore, I would like to change this one so that it's not what? Decimal. I can make 0 0.8 an integer by multiplying this one by what? By 10. 0 0.8 multiplied by 10, it will give me this. Okay? Then I will multiply the denominator the same by 10. 2 meters by 10, it will give me 20 meters, which is the 20. You should not be worried where the m, the meter, went, I cancelled this by this. So we remain with 8 over 20. Like we did in the previous example, we divide the numerator by 4, we get a 2. And we divide the denominator by 4 as well, we get a 5. So whichever way we look at it, it will yield the same answer of 2 over uh, 5. Okay. Now, I need to clarify a few things here when it comes to uh, simplification of um, ratios. We are saying if the numerator and the denominator do not have the same units, right, it may be easier to convert 
to the smaller unit so we don't have to work with decimals. Let's look at this example given 3 centimeters is to 12 meters. The smaller unit of measurement here is centimeters. So it may be good to convert everything to centimeters. In which case we have this 12 meters, if we convert it to the smaller unit which is centimeters, it will be 1,200 centimeters since every meter is equal to 100 centimeters. What we have simply done to convert, we multiplied by 100 this side. Okay? Therefore, we end up with 3 centimeters is to 12 centimeters. Now, if we are to simplify that one further, this one is the same as, you remember what we did? It's just the same as 3, it's uh, not writing well, let me get the other one. Um, 3 over 1,200. The centimeters are there, okay, but they cancel, all right? Now, if we say 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 12, 4. Then the zeros, we just bring them down. 1 over 500, which is the number that we can see here. That's our ratio. Well, the sum, if you look at this uh, one highlighted in red on the screen, 2 kgs is to 15 grams. It's a ratio. Again, like we have said, it's advisable that we change the uh, war expression into a unit of measurement that is smaller, the smaller of the two. In this case, it's the grams. So we will need to change everything to grams. 15 grams is already given as grams, so it won't change. We keep it there. Then the two, thousand, the two kilograms, we change it to grams, it becomes 2,000 grams. And again, once it's like that, we simply um, do the division. Now, that's the trick uh, that we will always follow. I hope uh, we have uh, managed to get that one. Let me move to the other area of proportions. And we would like to know what a proportion is. And as you can see, a proportion is an equation that equates two ratios. For example, A over B is equal to C over D. Right? Let me put it here. Okay. A over B is equal to C over D. So a proportion, it's an equation that equates two ratios. A over B is a ratio, C over D is a ratio, and we're saying this equation is equal. Okay, so that's a ratio. Now, we have said the ratio of dogs and cats was three to two, which means for every three dogs, uh, we've got two cats, okay? And the ratio of dogs and cats now is six is to four. When we do that, okay, it's the same thing. We are talking of the same thing here, right? Let me do this. Okay, okay, okay. I'll put this one aside and say, right, we have said the ratio of cats, uh, of dogs to cats is uh, three over two. And we're saying it's the same as the ratio of six is to four, or six over four. Yes, it's the same, right? So imagine, that's what we simply said. If we say A over B is equals to C over D, it's the same thing, okay? Now, how, in which way is it the same? It is the same because we can simplify the right-hand side by dividing by two here, we'll get two, and dividing the numerator by two, we'll get three. And you'd find that this is the same as that. That is the same, okay? So that is a proportion. This represents a proportion, an equation that equates two ratios, because this is the first ratio, the second ratio, and they are equal. Okay, that said and done, let's, um, 
look at yet another example. Right, uh, this one we have looked at it. That one we have just um, can get it by cross multiplication. I want us to look at what we mean by cross multiplication. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Cross multiplication, it's as you can see highlighted there. All right, I've got uh, 3 over 2 is equals to 6 over 4. Okay, if we are to cross multiply, you see the uh, blue line from 3 to 4. We are multiplying 3 multiplied by 4. As shown here, we get what? 12. Okay, then we multiply uh, 2 by 6, right? And we'll get 12 as well. There is something that we shall uh, need to look at carefully or to be careful about. When we are doing this multiplication, we are starting with this side. Okay? And we start with the numerator going this side. Okay? And we start with the denominator going that side. Don't worry about the arrow. It's only showing that this will give us that. Always master that. From here, we are going down. From down, we are going up. I'm not saying 3 times 4. Then I say 6 times 2. It's important. Of course, it gives a, it a prima facie. At first value, it seems we are going to get the same answer. But as you will find out, uh, it may be tricky. Just remember, the first ratio that you are using should always start. If I'm, I've started with this one, so we should always start with the first ratio. 3 multiplied by 4 and 2 multiplied by 6 in that order. Okay, let's have a look at um, a, our equation again. Right, we have got the equation, uh, the proportion shown there, which is A divided by uh, B. Let me try to use a black, I think it's clearer to use the black one. Okay, A divided by that is equal to uh, C divided by D. Okay. This expression can be written as if we were to do our cross multiplication, this one multiplies with this one. So we we'll end up with A D is equal to, we multiply this by that one. It's equal to B C, right? So, this is a proportion. And this order is what we normally you use. Okay, let me do this. What do I mean? So, I'm talking of the uh, numbers. Let me take this, we put it there. All right, okay. That's what we can see on the slide. The first letters, this one, you find it's at the beginning, A comes here as the first one. And B again comes to be the first one. It's not the other way around. Well, it's not a question of multiplying these ones, right? At random, okay? So this is what, what we mean the, uh, how we end up with the equation of AD is equals to BC. This, these numbers, right, that are indicated right here are what we call the extremes. And these ones are the smaller figures that we are looking at. Okay. I want us to play around. Let us play around with this to see that whichever way we play around it, as long as we observe that we begin by AB in our multiplication, we end up with AD equals to uh, BC. All right. It may sound tricky, but what we are doing here, I'll get a clear sheet of paper there, because we need to do some a bit of number crunching there. Okay. We have said A divided by B is equals to C divided by D. Here's what we can do, as you can see there, right? We took the first number, 
like that, that's equals to, if we say A of A to B, A to B, if we multiply this by D, okay, it's the same, since these are the same, it's the same. In other words, we must multiply both sides. If we multiply this one by D, we must also multiply this one by D. And what does that translate to? It will leave us at this stage, whereby we'll be having A divided by B, right, multiplied by D, will be equal to C over D, right, multiplied by D, like that. We've just, you see, uh, one simple rule in mathematics is that whatever happens to our uh, left side of the equation should also happen to the right side of the equation. That's what we have simply done here. So when we look at that, uh, if we are to simplify, here is what will happen, okay? Here, this and this cancels this side, okay? And when this happens, what do we remain with? We remain this side with equals to C, right? C alone, okay? And what happens this side? This one will not change anything. It will be A divided by, by B multiplied by D equals to C. That is one equation that we end up with. So, right? If you click and look at it, so A multiplied by over B multiplied by D, it gives us C. Okay, we want to go further with that uh, problem. Maybe we remove these ones from the side. Take a clear one, we put it there. We try to illustrate what we mean here. Okay, there we are. Now, we have, uh, we were here. A over B is equals to D a over B multiplied by D equals to C. Now, we want to deal with the other side. The other side, if you remember, we also had C, right, C divided by D multiplied by D. And this we cancelled and we ended up with equals to C. Let's say we now multiply every side by B. What happens if we multiply every side by B? Right, here is what will happen, right? We'll take A, D, multiplied by what? Right, we've got A over D. We ended up where it was like that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna multiply this one again by B and see whether it, what it will give us. Right, if we multiply this side by D, because we've said earlier on, C, D is equals to Mm, sorry, this one should be B. This one, it's a B. My God, it's clumsy. Clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me find a cleaner sheet of paper here. Then we do it again. We have said A divided by B multiplied by G is equals to C. And we have said we want to multiply either of these equations by this side, I'm going to multiply it by what? By B, which means this side, I multiply it again by what? By B, right. If I do that, I've multiplied either side of the equation by B. This right side is very simple. We'll end up with what? C, B, isn't it? C, B, and what happens here? This B will cancel this one, and we'll end up with what? A, D. So it will take us back to our original equation, right? If we do that, we remain with B, C on the other side. Okay, I wrote it. This I should have uh, started by writing down the B. But at the end of the day, what do we end up with? It takes us back to A, D equals to B, C. What we're doing here, we're just trying to see how we arrived at the equation A, D equals to B, C in our calculations of proportions. Okay, so we have got the principle of reciprocity when it comes to proportions. Now, what do we mean by reciprocity? We are simply saying the inverse also holds it true. If we are saying um, 1 over 2 is equal to 5 over 
10, right? The, by the inverse, we simply can write this as 2 over 1, and this one also as 10 over 5. They will remain the same. What we are simply saying here is uh, we can turn around the figures. What was the numerator becomes the denominator, and the proportion still holds true. Okay, that's the concept of reciprocity. 3 over 2 equals to 6 over 4 can be written as 2 over 3 equals to 4 over 6. Well, I want us now to uh, look at uh, one problem that we can work on. Okay? Suppose we are given that problem. 7 over 2 is equals to x over 6, and you are required to solve for x. How do we go about it? You remember the cross multiplication, isn't it? Don't forget our rule a over b, a divided by b, okay, is equals to c divided by what? By d. And we said the equation can be extended to read this one, A, D is equals to B, C, right? So in the same problem that we are given there, we can still do the same, right? How do we do it? Let me put it there, okay? What we see on this slide, we can simply mod cross multiply as well, right? This 7, we multiply it by 6, okay? And what do we get after that? We'll get, I'll put it here. If we do that, we are going to get uh, 7 multiplied by 6. We get, right, uh, 7 times 6. What do we get? 42, right? We get 42 there. Then 2 multiplied by x, we get 2x, right? This is how we arrived at this stage. Now, once we are there, we can simply divide this one by 2. This, this, we remain with x. And also divide this one by what? By 2. 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 42, 21. Now our x is equals to 21. So the whole concept of ratios and uh, proportion is meant to help us in solving problems, problems of this nature. Well, let us... Um, Look at uh, another example, that one. Remember the concept we said we can play around the inverse holds true. So we can still apply the same or but we can simply do simple multiplication, cross multiplication. You are given 7 over 2 multiplied by um, 12 over x. We do cross multiplication again where we say 7 multiplied by x, it will give us 7x. If we do this, by this, we come to 7x there, all right? Then 2 multiplied by 12. Always make sure that the first set multiplies the other one. So 7 multiplied by x, we get 7x. And 2 multiplied by 12, it gives us what? 24. So we get to this stage. Once, once we are there, we can now solve for x, which simply means 7 over x. If we divide either side by 7, 7 into 7, 7 into 7, we get, it goes 1. So remain with x. What I'm saying, simply saying, I've divided 7x by 7. 7 into 7, we get 1. We don't need to write the 1. We remain with x. Then 24 divided by 7 as well. What do we get? We get uh, 7 into 21. We know it goes 3 times. Over 3 over 7. Like that. Okay, we might need the calculators or whatever to finalize on that one, but that is not a big deal. Well, here's another example again. 7 divided by x minus 1. How do we solve it? Right, I will not go into detail on that one, but it's still the same thing. You can see on the slide, we've done the cross multiplication. 
right? 7, which is the numerator on the left, multiplied by the denominator, which is x on the right, it will give us the 7x that is there. And the equation will hold it to true. We have to multiply the lower equation there, which is x minus 1, treat it as one a number, multiplied by the uh, numerator on the right, which is the 3, and we end up with the 7x is equal to 3x minus 3. What do we do? Under the circumstances, we take the 3x on the right, we cross it to the left, it gets a negative number, and it will be, the other side will have 7x minus 3x, we end up with 4x, which is equal to minus 3. Then we solve for x by dividing both sides by 4, we end up with x on the left is equal to minus 3 over 4. We'll leave it there because we cannot... Uh, simplify it further. Now, I want us to move to uh, linear equations. Okay, we're solving linear equations. Right. Linear equations are the easiest type of equation to solve because the unknown is not raised to any power other than 1. So, linear equations, an example of a linear equation is x minus 19 is equal to minus 8. So what you are only required, there is no power. In other words, we don't have orders. You remember when we are dealing with the board mass, we've got orders. Here we don't have orders. We only have got straight all numbers. If we are to assume there are orders, then it's to the power one, which will not change anything. So how do we go about it, right? What we simply do here, because we want to remain with the x in isolation, so we can add 19 to both sides. If we add x to both sides, right, here is what we are doing. We are simply saying if we have got um, x minus 19 is equal to minus 8. Let's say we add 19 to both sides. What do we remain with? Okay. You would find this side will be having what? Plus 19. And this side we also have what? plus 19, because we've added 19. But plus 19 minus 19, it will cancel the 19 off. Then we end up with an x only on this side, which is equal to. Then we say plus 19, right? Minus 8, we end up with 11. So our answer x is equal to 11. Okay, let's look at example 2. Right, 7x is equal to 42. How do we go about it? Right, let me write it there. 7x is equals to 42. Oh, we want to remain with an x. We can only remain with an x if we divide either side by 7, isn't it? Right? This one, this one, it cancels. So this side will remain with only an x, which is equals to uh, uh, 42 divided by 7. 42 divided by 7, we know it's 6. So our x will be equals to 6. That's how we deal with linear equations. I want, I will not deal with that one as well. It's the same procedure that we have used. Blah, 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 blah. Right. I want us to look now at simultaneous equations. We'll look at one or two examples of simultaneous equations. Right. What do we mean by simultaneous equations? They are simply two equations with the two unknown numbers. In this case, in the last linear equation, we only had x to find. Now, we'll be required to find the two unknowns, one being x, the other one being a y. Right, how do we go about it? We have got two equations, and out of those two equations, we need to find two variables, two unknown variables. Now, to solve the equations, it means we need to find the values for both. And the equation that we come up with should be able to satisfy both equations. So, if we find our x and we find our y, when we are substituting it into the two equations, the equations should remain correct. Here's an example. We have got 2x minus y. 2x minus y equals to 1. And we have got 3x plus y is equals to 9. Right. How do we go about that equation? Right. Simple. Here is what we'll do. Okay. We can do it by elimination. In that example, if you look, we've got equation 1, A, A, and equation B. We have the same number of y's in each equation. 
right? Let me rewrite it. Um, we have got 2x minus y equals to 1. We have got the second one, 3x plus y equals to 9. We're going to use the elimination method. We can either underline and say, what do we do? You see, this, uh, the y's, the other one is a negative. The other one is a positive. So, by simply, if we add this, right? Let's say we say plus, we're adding these two. We'll get something interesting. Because it, the whole idea is to make sure that you, at the first stage, you eliminate one of the what? Of the unknown variables. In this case, y. It's simple, because this already, it will result in what? In zero y, which means there is no y, right? So if that is the case, we have what? We ignore it, it's gone, it will disappear. But when we add this 2x plus uh, 3x, we'll get uh, a figure of 5x. Let me use the blue one. Uh, we'll get 5x is equal to 1 plus 9. What do we get? 10. So. If that is the case, it's simple, isn't it? Right? We go back to the ratios. We divide by 5 this side. Oh, we also divide by 5 here. 5 into 5 cancels each other. Then we remain with x is equal to 5 into 5, 1, 5 into 10, 2. That's how we deal with that one. Okay. Right? It's just going through the same step. Divide both sides by 5. And we end up with x is equal to what? to there as shown on the slide okay now if that is the case now we now know the value of what of x if we now know the value of x what do we know we go back to our equation we substitute we now know the value of x right let's take the first example we said 2x Okay, is equals to, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. We said 2x, 2x minus y equals to 1. And we have said we now know the value of what? The value of x. Our x is equals to 2. So what we are going to do, we are going to substitute wherever there is an x, we put a 2. What does that mean? x is here, it means there should be a 2 here. Okay, right? And... What do we have here? We have got um, a 2 in this equation. We just brought it like that. Okay? Minus y is equals to 1. What does that mean? It means this one, 2 multiplied by 2, what do we get? We get 4 minus y is equals to 1. Okay, interesting. What we can do is we can move, simply cross this one. If it crosses what does it become? It becomes a positive y, isn't it? Then we cross this number 1 to this other side. It becomes a negative. So it becomes 4 minus 1, which is equals to 3. Hmm? This side equals to y. Now we know that out of our variables, we have got the numbers, okay, y and x. We now know x is equals to 2, okay? and y is equals to Three. Right, let's keep these numbers in mind and we do a bit of substitution into our two equations. Well, remember x is 2 and y is equals to 3. Now, that being the case, if we take our 2, right, then we multiply it by x, we now know x is equals to 2. Mm? x is 2, right, closing bracket. Then minus y, we know y is what? Is 3. You can put 3 there, sorry. And we know this is equals to 1. Okay, that being the case, it simply means this side of the equation, it's a 4 minus 3 equals to 1. Right? We know if we do that, this side is equals to 1. 4 minus 3 is 1 equals to 1. It's balancing. So that equation holds true. Okay? Let's take the same variables, the unknowns that we have calculated. Remember, x is 2 and y is 3. We want to substitute that into the second problem, which is 3x plus y equals to 9, to see whether it holds true. We know that x is what? Is 3. x is 2, sorry, x is 
two. Hmm? And y is three. Okay, then we just take, drop this three here, it goes there, and this one is three, it should be equal to nine. Does that make sense? This plus this, it gives us six, plus three equals to nine. So it's true. Mm, we got it now, that's fine. Um, so this is what we are summarizing on that slide. Okay, two by two minus y equals to one, it's y we know it's a three, then for our answer becomes um, three, that is the, becomes the correct answers. These are the processes that we went through, right? Uh, using the elimination method. I will not go into detail, but you can see there from those two equations, 5x plus y equals to 17. This is a different example that we are using by elimination method. You can see there, right? In that example, okay, let me look at this one briefly because it might confuse some people. Right. Can you see what is happening there? 5x plus y equals to 17 compared to 3x plus y equals to uh, 3x plus y equals to 11. When we are given such an example, what we simply do is look at how we can eliminate one of these variables. These variables that, let's look at y again. We've got plus y and plus y in the two different equations. But if we want to get rid of one, one of them should be a negative. So what do we do? We just multiply the one below. Huh? by a certain number. Or, if we just subtract, if we say the other one, less the one below, you see what will happen, right? We have put a negative number there. So we're saying A minus B, okay? A minus B, let's see what happens, okay? So, five minus three, of course every number, right? It, we assume it has got a positive there. So, plus five minus plus three, hmm? is the same as five X minus three, we get the two X here. Then plus Y minus plus Y is the same as plus Y minus Y. It disappears because it cancels each other. Then 17 minus 11, we get a six. It's done. So two X equals to six, which is the same as X equals to a three, right? So this becomes our answer. Once we know that, what do we do? We now know x is what? Is a 3. What we have done now, we have taken that 3 to substitute the first equation, 5x. So it's a 5 times 3. Because we now know x is 3, we put our 3 there, isn't it? Plus y, we end up with this equation. Now, from this equation, if we say 5 multiplied by 3, we get this 15. And this 15 plus y equals to 17. It's done. Because what we'll simply do here is you just take uh, the 15 goes the other side, it becomes a negative. Then it becomes y equals to 2. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's about simultaneous equations. I hope you find this help for you. Until next time, if you need some uh, clarification, you saw my number on the first slide. Ciao, ciao.